Well, good morning. My name is Carl Dannerberger here at the Ohio State University. And uh, it's uh, Sunday morning on this hot, humid day in July. And I thought I would give a short tour of some of the weed problems that I'm seeing on some of the residential lawns and commercial properties here in uh, central Ohio. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll see what happens. When discussing weeds, how can you not mention crabgrass? Here shown uh, here in this Kentucky bluegrass turf by the light yellow color. Uh, actually, crabgrass uh, has not been that bad so far. Where I see the major problems is usually in, ex in areas like this where there are long pavements or sidewalks where the turf has, has experienced high temperatures and uh, maybe some uh, moisture stress and crabgrass is germinated here. Uh, being a, a warm season type of grass, obviously it likes hot, uh, dry conditions. And uh, crabgrass will continue uh, through August to be a major problem on, uh, on many home lawns. But right now where I'm mainly seeing it is in stress lawns or areas right next to uh, a pavement where temperature can, can build up considerably. Not only can you find crabgrass along these walkways or along the pavement, but again along uh, uh, mounds or south-facing slopes where it gets extremely warm and the turf's under stress, you can see crabgrass uh, is quite adapted to and very competitive against the Kentucky bluegrass in these kind of environments. Here I'm walking up to a lawn that is uh, generally on low fertility. Uh, as you can see here, one of the major weeds that's popping up in uh, this turf that's lost some density is white clover. And it's quite obvious by the uh, little white flower it produces. Uh, clover is usually found on, uh, again, on uh, low nitrogen soils. Uh, usually a uh, good dense lawn will help discourage this. But at this time of the year, we've been fortunate, I guess one fortune is that with all the rainfall, the lawns have stayed dense. Uh, if we get into a real dry period, this weed will become quite, will be more obvious. And uh, oftentimes homeowners will want to know how to control it. For most of these types of weeds, this time of the year is not a good time to uh, control weeds. Uh, they should wait till fall to to do that, but oftentimes that's difficult when they're looking at this uh, all the time. Well, as we move along here too, uh, here's a couple weeds that are uh, quite apparent on a number of lawns around this area. One is uh, yellow nutset shown here. Uh, the bright yellow uh, leaves uh, are quite uh, much taller than that of the uh, Kentucky bluegrass. Uh, this weed is uh, not a grass, it's, it's a sedge. If you go down and feel around the uh, sheath or the base of the plant, you'll notice it's triangular shaped. And uh, again, classified as a sedge. It's a very difficult weed to control. There are some herbicides that you can treat for it, but it does have these small little uh, uh, bulbs or nutlets that uh, uh, are produced along the rhizome of this plant uh, underground where new plants can be generated or new weeds can be generated the following year or, or come up. So it's a difficult weed to control uh, and uh, but there is there is some chemicals that can can or some uh, herbicides that can treat for this weed. The other weed shown here is spurge and again it shows up in, in cracks of pavements and patios and in dried out areas but uh, it's uh, pretty prevalent in this area right now and it's pretty easy to diagnose if you reach down and you pull the leaf or pull the stem away you notice this uh, white milky substance which is characterized characterization of this weed. Uh, in most cases uh, there are uh, controls for these weeds and, and for both cultural and chemical control uh, either consult this uh, website or your extension specialist or some of the extension publications that are available. Well walking up to this lawn besides uh, noticing that it needs to be mowed uh, one of the things I'm starting to see and although I haven't seen quite a bit and again probably due to the amount of rainfall and, 
and from that point we haven't get into the moisture stresses is the initial uh, start of necrotic ring spot here you can see again intermixed in here the circular type patch patch that's starting to appear and if we move uh, over here too you can start seeing this patch form and as the disease becomes more severe and uh, uh, you'll notice that weeds will oftentimes colonize the center of these these patches in this case this is yellow wood soil is the weed in the middle but again just starting to see the signs of uh, necrotic ring spot interestingly on this lawn um, these symptoms are starting to appear where they've always appeared in the past and here I'm walking up on this turf site and uh, by far the biggest problem I'm seeing right now or the one that's generating the most questions is the cause of these brown circular patches that are appearing in Kentucky bluegrass turf throughout the area and actually this is a fungal disease dollar spot and uh, can be extremely severe on a number of uh, home lawns some home lawn cultivars of bluegrass are very susceptible to this disease it can be uh, quite severe on uh, low nitrogen turf and uh, but under these conditions of uh, hot humid and rainfall it can almost have been extremely uh, uh, conducive for disease development because the turf stays so wet so long so even in irrigated lawns this disease has become a become a major problem and if you look closely you can see the circular patches in some ways it may actually almost look like dog urine damage but if you look closely at the leaf blades and let's see if I can't find one here you can see that uh, uh, the lesions, it's a, uh, almost an hourglass shaped lesion on the leaf blade, bleached out white color, and brown borders on each side. And again, uh, this uh, controlling diseases in home lawns can be pretty expensive, and uh, uh, in most instances, we'll probably try to um, hope for weather change and the turf will start growing again and grow out of this disease. But again, if you need uh, or if you want to treat your turf, uh, consult with your uh, uh, extension specialist or uh, check recommendations out at this website. And again, uh, here's Dollar Spot on this lawn. Uh, this uh, uh, bluegrass cultivar is quite susceptible to uh, this disease combined with uh, the conditions we've had, uh, it has, uh, has actually gotten pretty bad here on this, this lawn. Well, this concludes my walk uh, through a few residential lawns here this morning. Uh, I want to apologize, too, to some extent for the kind of cut and paste that I did with this uh, video. It's almost like a Phil DeFranco uh, type video. If you don't know who he is, he's a YouTuber, but anyway, I more importantly I just didn't want you to uh, hear my wheezing as I'm walking around here I need to get in shape plus this hot humid weather is uh, it's kinda tough on everyone so until next time